All right, so we're at the pet store to get some bird seed for our little pigeon friends because I'm tired of feeding them rice and breadcrumbs. Look at all the fish. Got these tiny little breeder goldfish. Look at the eyes on these guys. What's called one guy? What is the one? These colorful ones. Oh, crap. Did I just turn off the lights? Well, I don't know if you guys saw them. That one's a dead one. Uh, I think these are like a dollar. Maybe ten for a dollar? I don't know. They're called Peter Goldfish. Ten dollars and eighty-seven cents for bird seed. Hopefully they eat it. Man, it's such a gloomy and rainy day, man. Oh, shit. Celino and Bonds, injury attorneys, 800 Don't wait. Call eight. Can I get one of these? Just one. What? Yeah, just one. Hello, my little friend. You tired? It's okay, I'm here. Folks, welcome back. Today, we're gonna have another Catch and Cook episode. And this time, I got a cameraman on deck, so thank you for that. Come over here, I'll show you guys what we're cooking. Here's a little butterfish that I ended up catching myself. Uh, if you guys are looking for the footage, it's gone, just like my Lake George footage, because we don't know how to make SD cards. Let y'all know right now, point the camera up. Let you know right now, I do not believe in fillet jobs. You say you like fillets, I will kill you. I will find your house. And I will, I, I will murder you. Alright, so this fish, it's not native here. I didn't actually catch it. You guys saw uh, the video of me buying at the supermarket earlier, so don't actually think I caught it. As I said, I do not believe in fillet jobs. So, first thing I'm gonna do is just chop off the fins. All right, um, I'll just throw that out later. Uh, I think I'm a scissor might be better for this. Okay, so we're chopping fins here, making progress. You guys can leave the fins on. I actually do prefer sometimes, like with certain fish that you leave the fins on. And the reason for that is once you fry it, it gets nice and crunchy and basically it's like a chip. So you see there's some nice meat in there. It's not bad. All right, that's not worms. Just just making sure it's not worms. Okay, um, fin's gone. There is a couple on the top. These fish really don't have a lot of defense mechanism. These fins are not sharp at all. They're nice and soft. I'm pretty sure they're like some type of a bait fish. Which is why people do say that these taste kind of nasty, but I don't know, I'll give them a try today. This thing's gonna be fried whole, by the way. Just letting you guys know. All right, so we got the second fin off. Next step, we're gonna decapitate it. And basically what I do is I feel for a soft spot and where it ends. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go and make a diagonal right behind where the pectoral fin was. And I'm just gonna go cut straight into it and just chop its head off completely. There we go. All right, there's the head. 
Are you getting that? It's just, oh my god. Glassy eye, because it died. It's not the freshest of fish. But, this, I think I'm going to save it in a plastic bag for chum. So, none of this goes to waste. <clears throat> I'm going to be making videos about making chum using a dollar store net. Right. <laughs> Moving on from that gag, uh, that little bit of a gag reflex right there. There is a lot of stuff in there. So I'm just going to come over here. It's going to empty out its stomach into the bag. And for that, actually, uh, let's just get that out. Oh my god. That is, you do not want to pop that. And that is why it smells so bad right now. I accidentally popped its gallbladder when I chopped its head off. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to cut open the stomach right here. And that should help us get a little bit more of a leverage towards this fish. So we can like take out its guts a little bit easier. Whew. Okay. And now we're just gonna open it up right there. Notice you can see all its guts and glory. And we're just gonna wash it out. So. A uh, nice bloodline there, which you do not like seeing in a fish. And there you go, that's the bloodline right there. So I'll show you guys how to deal with the bloodline right now. What you do is you take a knife and you're just gonna run it along right there. All right. And what that does is it basically makes sure that amount of blood just like leaks out. This is why you should always bleed fish. The second you catch them, go behind their gills and just cut with that and then hang them upside down. What that will do is basically, it will basically just get the blood out. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna wash it out thoroughly. Make sure all of that blood is gone completely. Because oh my god. That is the bloodline. Oh god. Fish man. Last step is to scale it. And for that, you're gonna need one of these trusty tools. Just picked it up at Walmart for like three dollars on my way up to Lake George. Lake George. Footage gone. Okay, so I'm gonna descale. Go in the opposite direction of the fins. We're just gonna scale it. Does this even have scales? <laughs> Guys, this fish has no scales. Bro, just double check that for me. Put your finger on it. It has no scales, right? Oh my god. What the hell? What we's gonna do, since there's no scales, we're gonna make tiny little incisions in the body of the fish. That's that. Next step, let's take a bowl. Fill it up with a little bit of water. Come over here. We have a couple ingredients that my mom happily chopped up for me and left in the fridge. What we're gonna need is we're gonna need this entire half lime. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just chop up the slime. I'm gonna juice the fish basically and basically give it a bat salt and lime. What this will do is it'll get a lot of the fishy smell out of it, similar to the way that milk does. Alright, just make sure I catch any seeds. The last thing you need is a seed inside the belly of this fish. And in a sense, it kind of already begins the cooking process because of the acidity of the fish. Okay, that's one half. Alright guys, so we got the lemon in there and now the next step is you're going to add some salt. Awesome. And our next step is to let this sit. Oh god. <laughs> let this sit for like a good five to ten minutes and just get that stinky smell out of it because that thing reeks right now. I don't know guys. I don't know how that is gonna smell. Alright. Pause, 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 pause the video, my dude. <laughs> Alright, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut up two cloves of garlic and this is basically gonna go 
inside the fish. So chop them up. All right, so now that we finished chopping up our garlic, we're gonna take the fish out. It's been sitting in the lime salt bath for a little while. You could just take that and discard it. We don't really need that anymore. Just wash that later. Um, what we're gonna do with the garlic is we're gonna go into the meat and we're gonna just make sure we put it into the scours of the meat. What this is gonna do is basically gonna let some flavor into the fish as well as outside of it. It should be a nice add. The rest of this is gonna be a garnish. What we're gonna do is, now we're gonna wanna pat the rest of the outside of the fish nice and dry. I'm gonna pat the sides of the fish nice and dry. So we can add our batter for the fish. Because this is gonna be fried whole. You're gonna wanna take some dry seasoning. This is a combination of celery salt, thyme, and basil. And to that, we're gonna add our garlic. Another plate here. And to that plate, we're gonna do a mixture of breadcrumbs and flour. So you're gonna wanna go about two tablespoons of flour. I'm gonna go a little bit more so we can coat the fish thoroughly. But keep in mind that there's also gonna be the next ingredient, the breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs, I'm just gonna eyeball this. It's gonna be about two teaspoons or so of breadcrumbs to a tablespoon. It's up to you guys. And we're basically gonna give that a little stir. Make sure everything's stirred up nice. To this, we are going to add some black pepper powder. And we're just gonna give this a stir. So our DSLR just died, so we switched to an iPhone camera. We got our batter, well, dry batter right here. Uh, we have the dry herbs to go with it, so we're just going to go ahead and incorporate those two into here. Now that our dry ingredients are done, we're going to move on to our wet ingredients. So for that, I'm going to need... Wow! <laughs> He's going to get some huevos. For a fish this small, you only need, you only need one egg. So... Don't take it off your women. Make sure you take it from the fish. Because, you know, you know, um, respect women. Okay. Got our egg. Okay. We're gonna crack our egg. Ooh. <laughs> We's gonna whip it up. Like a stir fry, put it in the kitchen wrist, just it like a stir fry, put it in the kitchen wrist, just it like a stir Okay. We're gonna get a big skillet here. I'm gonna pour in some oil. You're gonna wanna use a reasonable amount of oil. And we're gonna let that heat up on medium heat. We're gonna let that heat up. Meanwhile, we're gonna come over here and do nothing because we gotta wait for that to heat up and we're basically done here, so. Okay. All right, guys, oil's getting hot. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our fish, we're gonna dip it in the egg wash. Get as much egg as possible because that's gonna help it bind to the flour. And afterwards, we're gonna pick it up and we're just gonna dip it into the flour mixture. Make sure you coat it on both sides as evenly as possible. You want to get as much flour on there as possible because that is our seasoning for the fish. You want to make sure you get all parts of it covered. Oh, I hear the oil bubbling. Should probably go lower that. All right, so oil's nice and hot. Come over here. We're just going to come over here and we're going to just push this in. And we're just going to let that cook for three minutes aside. 
and now it's time to flip it so look at that nice and golden you know uh, the garlic's getting browned up the fish is getting nice and moist we want to cook this until it's nice and crunchy on the outside that's why we put the flour in and the skin's gonna get nice and crunchy too it is time to take it off it's been frying for like a good five minutes or so I'm gonna try to get as much oil out of it as possible while retaining while retaining its crust while retaining its crust and crunchiness so here we go and that is it that is our final product nice and crispy let's just get some fill light on there focus in on it oh look at that nice and sizzling so that's gonna go with some tartar sauce and we're also gonna chop up some avocados so let's do that An avocado thanks Okay, so we's gonna chop up half an avocado. Just another plate because our cutting board's in the sink. Now we're gonna spoon it out on top of the fish. Ooh, there's still some hot oil on this. Give it a little bit of like a buttery texture. It's gonna go a little bit of salt. And some pepper. Last but not least. This time we're gonna add some lime. We added lemon in the past. And I did say lime. Uh, excuse my uh, speech impediment, but some lime over the top just for some extra flavor and we are done this actually smells really really good all right guys so we're up to the taste part of this so i'm gonna move aside some of the avocado because i really want to taste just the fish for now and see how the flavor of the fish is so let me just show you guys so I think I'm just gonna go in with my hands. So, oh, I feel that it is very crunchy. And let me try to get some of the meat so I can show you guys. Wow, that meat is hot. And it's like really, really tender. Where's my camera? And it's like extremely white. I don't know if you guys could see that. Look how white that meat is. And it feels pretty soft. So here we go. Let's give this a taste test. That is pretty good. That tastes literally like a bluefish. Like, even though they're not native to this part of my, my city or like my state, it tastes really, really good. And the best part is if you have like the belly meat or like the fins, it's literally like a chip. Try some with the avocado. And I got some tartar sauce. It tastes pretty good the fish itself is relatively bony but that is what the frying process kind of helps with it kind it kind of makes it really really crunchy and kind of adds like that chip flavor the skin's nice and crunchy too there's nothing to apologize for here literally one of the best tasting fish i ever tried and it's nice and cheap too i bought this fish for only 90 cents so it's a steal and it's definitely worth the win. So, I'm gonna finish eating this and there will be more catch and cook soon. And as soon as the weather warms up, I'm gonna be able to start going fishing again. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next shot.